Growing in virtue, we consider the seven capital or deadly sins and their opposite virtue to strengthen our resolve to live a life of holiness and virtue in God's friendship and with the help of the saints. Day 7. Chastity overcomes lust. More souls go to hell because of sins of the flesh than for any other reason. These are the words of Our Lady of Fatima to Jacinta in 1917. Our Lady also said to Jacinta, certain fashions will be introduced that will offend our Lord very much. Consider the world now compared to 1917 how mired we are in immorality, when even governments encourage and promote a disordered way of living in direct opposition to the commandments of God. Our Lady's warnings at Fatima about immodest dress have been borne out. Immodest fashions encourage immoral behaviour and fornication, which leads to contraception, which leads to abortion. The breakdown of morality and disregard of God's laws in modern society can be seen to stem from immodest fashions beginning in the 20th century. To overcome the deadly sin of lust, the sin which is responsible for most of the souls in hell, we must practice the heavenly virtues of chastity and modesty. This can be practiced in everyday life by somewhat separating ourselves from the prevailing culture. Both men and women should dress modestly, with clothes to conceal rather than reveal. Keep away from entertainments, which may be an occasion of sin. Television, cinema, magazines, sinful websites, pop music, frequenting bars and gyms. If behaviour at your workplace or school or college should lead you to sin, take St. Philip Neri's advice and avoid bad company. Don't join in with jokes or, or gossip which could lead to an occasion of sin. If you are in the company of others and cannot move away, then interject to change the subject quickly to something innocent and wholesome. By living a chaste life, you preserve your soul from this dreadful deadly sin and you grow in a happy virtue. There are many examples of some of the most beautiful saints in, in heaven who overcame sins of impurity. If you are struggling with impurity, ask your guardian angel for help and pray to Our Lady and some of these saints, King David, Saint Mary Magdalene, Saint Augustine of Hippo, Saint Mary of Egypt, Saint Margaret of Cortona. If you have unconfessed sins of impurity, go to confession immediately. There is nothing that the priest hasn't heard before. An anonymous confession behind a grill take away your sin and shame and give you the strength for the battle. Even if you have to confess the same sin every week, the grace of the sacrament, where the redeeming blood of Jesus is poured, poured out on you, will give you the grace and resolve to avoid this deadly sin. Jesus has such love and mercy for repentant sinners. I say to you, that even so there shall be joy in heaven upon one sinner that doth penance, more than upon ninety-nine just who need not penance. Luke chapter 15 verse 7 And Jesus went unto Mount Olivet, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and sitting down he taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees 
bring unto him a woman taken in adultery. And they set her in the midst, and said to him, Master, this woman was even now taken in adultery. Now Moses in the law commanded us to stone such a, a, a one. But what sayest thou? And this they said, tempting him, that they might accuse him. But Jesus, bowing himself down, wrote with his finger on the ground. When therefore they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And again, stooping down, he wrote on the ground. But they, hearing this, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest. And Jesus alone remained, and the woman standing in the midst. Then Jesus, lifting up himself, said to her, Woman, where are they that accuse thee? Hath no man condemned thee? Who said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither will I condemn thee. Go, and now sin no more. John chapter 8 verses 1 to 11 Note Jesus says, Go, and now sin no more. Jesus has so much love and mercy for the sinner, but tells her to stop sinning. Just as when we make our act of contrition before we are given absolution, with the help of your grace, I will not sin again. We must always make a firm resolution not to sin again. St. Francis de Sales, in his Consoling Thoughts, provides gentle counsel in growing in holiness. In this chapter, he shows how Jesus loves the sinner. The love of Jesus for sinners. Our Lord, the great and excellent physician of our infirmities, announced everywhere before coming into this world, both his arrival and the maladies he would cure, sometimes by his prophets. I will bind up that which was broken, and I will comfort that which was weak. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, to teach the poor he hath sent me, to heal the contrite of heart. They will be cleansed from all their iniquities, and thou shalt save the humble. Come to me, all ye that are weary. What wonder then if in the Gospel we find him surrounded by the sick, by sinners and by publicans? O oh, vain and foolish murmuring of the Jews when they said, This man receiveth sinners. Whom would you wish him to receive? Is it not the honour of a physician to be sought for by the sick? And so much the more as their maladies are considered incurable. Let us conclude then that it is his pleasure to lead back sinners to mercy. The soul departs from God, flying away from his graces and the means which he proposes for our salvation, as we say that a man flies from physicians. Not that he hates the person so much as the prescription of the physician. By how far sinners are from God, by so far are they from his mercies. What pity, what regrets, for that which the great Saint Augustine says is most true. Lord, thou hast made us for thyself, and our heart cannot rest but in thee. O oh, what disorder in man with regard to his God and with regard to himself. But there is one consolation in the midst of so great a desolation, that though the sinner is far from God, he may return and will be well received. Let the impious forsake his way, 
and the wicked man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have pity on him, for he is bounteous in his mercy to forgive. Observe that God not only says he will pardon the ordinary sinner, one who has been carried away by common passions, but even the impious, that is to say, the man without faith, without law, without religion, the man who has insolently risen up against God and his Christ, who has uttered a thousand blasphemies, who has outraged heaven and scandalised earth by the frightful impiety of his language, who, even as Manassas, has destroyed the worship of God, overthrown its altars, erected idols in their place. This is the monster, the very thought of whom makes us tremble, that God promises to forgive, not after a long lapse of years spent in laborious penance, but on the very first day of his conversion, though it should be the last of his life, if his return to God is sincere. And you, souls of little faith, still doubt whether God pardons you, your old wanderings, although for a long time you have wept over, or at least detested them. Thus, how were the poor prodigal and the unfortunate Absalom received by their fathers? And, otherwise, what would become of us? For all have sinned. Every man is a liar, that is to say, a sinner. If we say that we are without sin, we deceive ourselves. Return to the Lord and forsake your injustice for his mercy is great towards those who are converted to him. Why is he called Saviour, unless in order to save? Sinners and publicans drew nigh to hear his word. In the 22nd chapter of the first book of Kings, it is related of David that being in the cave of Odolam, needy and afflicted men gathered to him, and he became their king. This was to prefigure the second and true David, who should allow the poor and needy, the afflicted and miserable, those groaning under the heavy burden of corporal infirmities, and much more those sinking under the insupportable burden of sin, to approach him. The Pharisees murmur because he received sinners. But let us observe for a little how he receives them, and we shall behold great wonders. I acknowledge that my strength comes from thee, my God, because thou art my support. It is God who produces good wishes and desires within us, and it is he who perfects them and conducts them to execution. Draw me after thee, and we shall run. O infinite goodness, our Lord goes in search of the lost sheep, otherwise it would never return. Ah, though some murmur at mercy, let us at least praise it, for it receives sinners and seeks them. Jesus, being in the temple on the day of the great solemnity, cries out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. Come to me, all you. God has promised to pardon, and to pardon the greatest and most numerous crimes. Yes, he says by his prophet, Though your sins should have made your soul as red as scarlet, I will make it as white as snow. You are plunged in crime, and it is only with horror I behold you. Still, I cannot turn away my eyes from you, and close my ears to your prayers. Be converted, change your thoughts, desires and conduct. Cease to do evil, learn to do good, and then come before me with confidence. And if I do not hear you, accuse me as unfaithful to my promises. We can then tell God to remember his promises and to keep his word by pardoning our sins, a word which supports our hope in the remembrance of our crimes and without which we should fall into despair. But oh, miserable that we are, 
we are often called, and we only turn a deaf ear. I have called and you have not heard, says God. We are drawn and we obstinately resist him. He complains, saying, All the day long have I stretched out my hands to this incredulous and rebellious people. O holy, fortunate and happy crowd of sinners and publicans who approach to the Lord. They are not like those invited to the great feast who excuse themselves. They come and are welcome. O my Saviour, how have these sinners drawn nigh to thee, since thou art just? For David says absolutely of the just man that evil must not approach to him. Depart from me, ye wicked. No one can come to me unless my Father draw him. Approach to God, and you will be enlightened, and your faces will not be confounded, for he receives sinners. But behold the manner of approaching to him. We must retire from sin. Retire from evil. Go out from Babylon. Flee the Chaldees. Peace is not with the wicked, says the Lord. You have sinned by thought, word and deed. You must have recourse to contrary things, contrition, confession and satisfaction. The hour is come to arise from sleep, since we know that he receives sinners. The angels await our repentance. The saints pray for it. These words of St. Francis de Sales encourage us to repent of our sins in the sure hope of God's mercy. St. Philip Neri exhorted the practice of chastity in many of his maxims. When a man is in the occasion of sin, let him look at what he is doing, get himself out of the occasion and avoid the sin. If young men wish to protect themselves from all danger of impurity, let them never retire to their own rooms immediately after dinner, either to read or write, or do anything else. But let them remain in conversation, because at that time the devil is wont to assault us with more than usual vehemence. And this is the demon which is called in scripture the noonday demon, and from which holy David prayed to be delivered. If young men would preserve their purity, let them avoid bad company. One of the most efficacious means of keeping ourselves chaste is to have compassion for those who fall through their frailty and never to boast in the least of being free, but with all humility to acknowledge that whatever we have is from the mercy of God. To acquire and preserve the virtue of chastity, we have need of a good and experienced confessor. The stench of impurity before God and the angels is so great that no stench in the world can equal it. In temptations of the flesh, a Christian ought to have immediate recourse to God, make the sign of the cross over his heart three times and say, Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Humility is the true guardian of chastity. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Mary, most holy, pray for us sinners. Saint Francis de Sales, pray for us. Saint Philip Neri, Pray for us, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.